Explain why you're here. We're here to witness the, the commencement of the construction of the Spectra Pipeline in the Hudson River construction site right here in the West Village where they're now beginning to cut the street um, and to lay the pipe down and soon they're going to be blocking lanes of traffic in the West Side Highway. You should get that. All that cost from that thing. the 100% clean natural gas that they're bringing into New York. Is, is it true that this pipeline will bring not only frac gas but radioactive radon? Well, the Marcellus Shale, where the, the gas is being shipped from in liquefied natural gas form, is, is naturally radioactive shale. And so they're they're shipping this, it's an expansion project of the 60 mile gas pipeline from Pennsylvania's Marcellus Shale, which probably eventually will open up to New York's uh, Marcellus Shale water reservoir as well, which could also contaminate our groundwater and our food and watershed. But yes, the radon gas will most likely be shipped in here into our homes, to our cooking gas, to our small, tight apartments where we could be exposed to that and develop lung cancer and other deleterious effects. You've been, both of you have been out here with a group of people from Occupy Wall Street for about the last three weeks. Uh, this is a very sad moment, isn't it? It's, uh, it's depressing to smell these fumes and to watch them, watch these union workers Looks like some of them are union. Uh, you know, forced to make a livelihood by destroying uh, this beautiful park and pumping in this toxic crap into the city. It's encouraging, though, that last... You know, we've been mobilizing around this for over a year. And it's, it's not depressing. It's encouraging to see the thousands of people who have mobilized with us against this project and to know that we are coming together against it, then we're going to fight back. So you think that this is like the next stage of the fight to stop the fracking pipeline? Yeah. Well, we have, we're working on all angles. We have a diversity of tactics. We're, we have people working with politicians. We have people working on lawsuits. And we also have the grassroots campaign. Now when people see this and these people hear this, we think people are really going to come out to the call and really have on ground, you know, ground swell rise up against this. Can either one of you talk about the potential for uh, an explosion here? I've read and seen videos of explosions in just across in Edison, New Jersey and in San Bruno, California a pipeline by the same company, I believe. I don't think anyone knows about that potential danger. Did one of you talk to it? Sure. Right after they approved this pipeline, there was a natural gas explosion in Long Island, I believe. And there was also a fire of sorts about three or four blocks from here from existing natural gas infrastructure. The explosion in San Bruno killed eight people it was in a uh, suburban neighborhood during a, a weekday, so there weren't, there weren't a lot of people around. But nonetheless, eight people died. It wasn't a Spectra pipeline, but it was a pipeline very similar to this one. Similar uh, diameter and similar pressure. Now, if an explosion like this, like that, in San Bruno were to occur here, it would be occurring in a very densely populated area near a playground, uh, near these swanky shops over here, near the High Line Park. And in Jersey, where this is going through, there's several ball fields, 
There's a chemical storage plant. So security, Holland Tunnel, Holland Tunnel, New Jersey Turnpike, the Statue of Liberty, the New Whitney Museum. And there are about 125 federal pipeline inspectors. It's a federal project. And there are about 2 million miles of natural gas pipeline in the United States. Despite that real lack of oversight, the corporation that's running this pipeline has managed to rack up about $4 million in fees for corrosion and other safety hazards associated with their material. So, there's a risk. And the pipeline in San Bruno had a very wide blast radius. So when we talk about the risk of explosion, we're talking about a wide area here in this densely populated neighborhood. That also includes toxic air. It's just not the actual site of the blast, but what the ramification of that, of that explosion will be on the neighborhood. Last week, Mayor Bloomberg, who some people think of as a progressive mayor, <laughs> made a statement saying that he supports hydro fracking. What do you, why do you think he did that? And what effect will that have on the governor, Cuomo, who, a Democrat, who is now trying to decide the state's position on hydro We're sorry, what was the last thing you said? Well, first, what, what do you, why do you why think Mayor you Bloomberg that? made that statement, given what you've just said about the dangers? And then what impact will that have on Cuomo? Right, well... But of course, there's there's a lot of backdoor deals that go on with something like this, and a lot of money to be made for a lot of few individuals. You know, um, the investors that are working on this project are are Chase Bank, you know, Bank of America. I mean, Chase Bank just gave them like 30 million dollars recently to this. Um, Bloomberg gave uh, 20 million dollars to the Whitney Museum right here that's, that's being put up right across the street. Um, it, it, the Bloomberg's girlfriend is, is in the, what is she on the board of the, she's on the, the, the board of the trust of the of this park. The Hudson River Parks Commission um, that, that passed this through along with FERC, with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Um, can you want to say more about that? Sure. Bloomberg's a Wall Street there, right? And this gas is creating a market. Uh, this pipeline's creating a market for that natural gas. Now, his uh, his sweetheart is on the board of the trust that gave credit and easement to Spectra. Well, that trust is, is a combination of New York City and the state. It's really public taxpayers' money that pay for this part. Yeah, and, they, and the trust got a little bit of cash. It wasn't exactly a sweetheart deal. But one of the interesting aspects of this is that the economic crisis has really bankrupted the trust. Wall Street bankrupted the trust. Now Wall Street's back in this pipeline. And the trust has to take money from this pipeline uh, layers so they can fund this part. So we have a cycle. Bloomberg also recently donated to the Environmental Defense Fund. So he's playing both sides. Playing Wall Street, and he's playing the more mainstream environmental group, telling them cracking the state that this gas is clean. But I, I suggest anyone that thinks that, I suggest they come down here, hear this noise, smell that diesel, watch the fumes coming by, coming out of the air on this lovely park. The people are jogging and walking by on this beautiful morning. This is what it looks like. When they, when they expand the market for natural gas in New York City. Let alone what it would do to places where they're actually drilling and where Cuomo's plan for where he wants to allow permitting for hydraulic fracturing is so loud. It's in the southern tier of New York, in the places where they're now being referred to as the sacrifice zones, where people are in rural communities, where people can stand to use new, some jobs, um, in you know, places that are impoverished. And that 
they think we'll you know, be the ones to, to take this attack and not say anything about it and not stand up and fight for their rights. And we won't have that. I mean, we won't let anyone be sacrificed. And there is, and it's not even possible that it can be contained within just these small zones. Once you allow hydraulic current, I mean, this, these toxins travel underground. They travel down into the groundwater. It, it would destroy our food and watershed, our agriculture. And I, I will say that the divide and conquer strategy they've used through Southern Gear isn't necessarily working. I spoke to a woman at a mass mobilization in Albany last Monday, and she was telling me that about two-thirds of her town have signed petitions to ban fracking, and the town board won't accept it. So people aren't necessarily buying this Pass the prosperity, sacrifice their own bull that they're really bumping. And the fact that we've been able to hold off the, the gas industry in New York, despite all their money, despite people like Bloomberg and Governor Cuomo taking money from them, uh, getting, getting like the full, uh, getting, hearing their whispers, hearing the whispers of the natural gas industry in their ear frequently. A massive groundswell of resistance has been able to hold, been able to hold the crackers at bay. It seems that money is at the bottom line is the reason that there's such conflict over this. It, it's not just environmental. It seems to be about the amount of money that is to be made, both by individuals who support fracking and by the bank and by the state. Were you a part of the demonstrations about having a Robin Hood tax, which was a tax that would put a small, a very small tax on every Wall Street transaction that would, in essence, help make up all of the loss of money because of the cutting of taxes on rich people, and create a situation like this where states and city governments look anywhere they can to find the task to a pay themselves and provide basic social services. Is that not one of the underlying conflicts here? I don't know. I, think, I wonder if we could even be heard on this now. This is so loud. Do you think this mic is good? Yeah. Do you know about this? Yeah, I would say that that's a necessary reform and that we should be mobilizing for that. It would also really help that these guys got employment elsewhere so they don't have to make a livelihood by destroying our city and our earth. That's something that's really missing from the environmental rhetoric, right? People talk about green jobs. That's good. We need to, we need to be talking about training and union jobs so that we can make a transition off of this filth and onto something that's renewable. One, one last question. I'd like to first of all, will you both identify yourself and tell, can you show how people in this neighborhood can become involved in the next couple of weeks to try to stop what they're doing today. Yeah. Um, I'm Monica Hudkin, and I, um, I'm organizing in this with a coalition of groups uh, that's under the umbrella of Occupy the Pipeline, um, with Sustained Energy Project, with River Dealing, with Christmas Shop Shopping, with Time Stuff, with Occupy Wall Street, Environmental Solidarity, um, Water Defense, uh, New York Fraction, a lot of groups. And over the next few weeks, there's going to be a lot of action coming up. Probably midweek, we might have a rally here. Um, we'll have some outreach going on. Uh, we're going to have um, a lot of actions around September 17th, when there's the National Convergence for Occupy Wall Street, one-year anniversary. So there will be, um, we'll have a action down on Wall Street, and we'll also have um, flash mobs. I would also go to a great site called Occupy the Pipeline. What's it? Occupy the Pipeline. Dot. Google. Google Occupy the Pipeline. It'll come up right away. And Monica sums it up very well. My name's Peter Rue. I'm with Occupy Wall Street Environmental Solidarity. And uh, yeah, pay attention. We'll be sending out alerts. 
Go to face. Go to the Occupy the Pipeline Facebook. And uh, there's a text group people can join. How do they join the text group? Yeah, it's, it's at Brack. But you have to, is it Q3359? What is it? Do you remember? Q Talkie, stop. <laughs> we'll, find, yeah. we'll find that out and put it we'll on. Find it. Uh, uh, will the puppets be back? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to do a, a Blast Zone perimeter parade on September 16th, which will lead in a concert with um, Tom Morello from uh, uh, Race right. Against the Machine. Um, and that's going to be in Foley Square. We'll be leaving from here at 11 a.m., I think. Um, so we're going to march through and all the way through downtown with giant puppets. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.